yeah, for sure, like trying to find footage and stuff like that. We've we've been able to find a couple of a uh, couple of her fights, um, but you know, having her having such a long time off, you know, I'm, I'm sure she's been training and she's been improving. So, you know, the Norma Dubont who last fought is going to be very different skill set wise to. Uh, who's going to be stepping in on the cage on Saturday night. So we can't really take into consideration too much of that footage. I'm sure there's going to be some tendencies that she carries through, but, you know, we're all improving and she's going to bring new skills to the table. And for us, it's more about what we're doing and my game and implementing that. We had Felicia in earlier, and she said it did kind of feel like an audition in terms of who's next at Featherweight. Do you feel the same way? Uh, to be honest, I don't really care. Um, I think a lot of people are putting so much stock into who's next and who's next. You know what? My mind is solely focused on February 29th because everything else doesn't matter unless I get my hand raised. And, and so I'm putting all of my energy and, and my attention into putting on an amazing performance and you know, showcasing my evolution in the sport. You feel you've got a pretty big proponent of the UFC promoting its weight class and everything there. Does it make you happy to see this kind of format on a card like this, though? It really does. Um, I, I, I try to, I guess, I try to promote this division as much as I can, uh, considering, you know, there aren't a lot of women in the featherweight division in the UFC. And you know, this will be my fifth fight in, I think, just under two years. I think my first fight will be two years in June. So it's, I've had, I've been pretty consistent and I've been pretty active within the last 18 months. So, uh, for a division that's not supposedly here, I'm pretty active. So I, I'm happy that they're starting to put on more fights and more fights in this division. And, um, it just means growth and it means new challenges. And I hopefully that they can bring in new people as well. How do you think that other fight goes between Felicia and Zara? Um, I don't really care. Like, I'm not really paying attention to it. Like, like I'm just here focused on me and, and doing my thing and having fun and making sure I get paid. <laughs> Did you think of what uh, James Post did a couple weeks ago and stepping in on his <laughs> notice? Um, I am not surprised. Uh, I swear to God, he talks mad shit every day. <laughs> like, we'll be watching, uh, like, Instagram, like, and so oh, this so-and-so pulled out, they're trying to find an opponent. He's like, I'll fight him. Like, I, he, if not every day, every other day, he's, you know, he's saying shit like that. But I am so happy that he's finally getting the recognition that he's deserved for a long time. He's been in the UFC the amount of time I've been training MMA. Like, he's been in the UFC for almost seven years now. He's been doing this sport for 13 and finally, like, I'm so, so happy that he's not only getting recognition as a fighter, he's getting the recognition as a coach, as a businessman, as a family man. And I couldn't, you know, it couldn't happen to a better person. Yeah, after that card and his fight and everything, there was a lot of talk about open scoring in MMA. Yep. What, what do you think of that? Do you, is that something you'd like to have happen? Yeah, well, so I'm making my color commentating debut for Invicta Phoenix series next Friday, uh, March 6th at the Memorial Hall in Kansas. Uh, and they're implementing the first ever uh, open scoring in MMA. So I'm really excited. I, I'd spoken to Shannon about it. Weirdly enough, that day while I was shopping in Target, uh, about it before the UFC 247 card happened. Uh, and I was like, look, let me think about it. Let me talk to some of the fighters and then UFC 247 happened and it was, everyone was talking about it. And I think as a competitor, I would want to know, like if we're going into the third round, if it's a three round fight and it's, it's super close, I would want to know. Cause I'm like, if I need to fucking like go, <laughs> go out all out and go for a Hail Mary in these five minutes, like I, I would want to know, but I know everybody's different. And, and I feel like coaches kind of give you a, they kind of give you a realistic, like, answer anyway in between rounds like I know James always comes in and and he's always harsher on us he's always gonna if it's a super close round he'll give it to our opponent just because he's like look we just never know uh so I feel like coaches do that anyway like going into rounds like yeah we definitely won that round on that we need to do more we didn't we kind of like lost that round this is what we got to do um so I feel like most fighters know generally but particularly in title fights I feel like going into those championship rounds I would want to know does there need to be more done in, in terms of that? Maybe 
uh, former fighters, judges, something of that nature. Because I know with the James fight, I mean, it came out that one oh, of yeah. the judges had some connection to Trevor Giles. So, I mean, do we need a little more than just open scoring? Oh, yeah. The, the problem is, is the rules aren't going to change. The, the fact that, like, each state has a different rule set is, is exactly why it's never going to change because there is no one governing body that controls everything or not really controls but like monitors everything um but there definitely needs to be like background checks on judges because that shit shouldn't happen like you would never like in a in any other sport or in any other olympics like in olympics or whatever you would never let somebody who has some form of a relationship judge a competition at that level if they have some form of tie or relationship or even in the past with that person because you just never know like you want you want judging or scoring in any sport to be as unbiased as possible so that shit should never have happened and i think i personally think that it should be turned to a no contest we saw you the other day with a kansas city chiefs hat yes. uh, what do you prefer more the nfl or aussie rules football um, I, <laughs> I never actually followed a lot of Aussie rules. Uh, I was more of a rugby league. Uh, I'm from Queensland, so kind of New South Wales, Queensland on our side, on the East Coast. We're on the East Coast, right? Yeah, we're on the East Coast right now, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm looking at, like, stop it. <laughs> um, we are more of, like, the rugby Whereas like the West Coast and down south where Melbourne is, is more like AFL okay. and Aussie rules. So I never really got into Aussie rules too much. Uh, but rugby is very similar scoring wise and, and position wise and all that kind of stuff with NFL. Uh, so it has been relatively easy to, to pick up and understand. Like there's still some things that I don't get and I don't get why. Like why do you stop so much? Like it's just like a... Like a you play for like what it's like 15 minute quarters so you play for like 60 minutes and it turns into like a five hour long day <sighs> that annoys me whereas like rugby it's so continuous and it's exciting and like 90 minute game and it's done in 90 minutes and you're out of there have you seen the xfl and seen their new rules i have watched a little bit and i am actually like it's kind of exciting like i, de I definitely like the different way that they start the game and that kind of stuff but yeah i haven't really look too much into the xfl like but i have seen some stuff on espn and and what they've done so i think it's really cool we don't know what's gonna happen with the you know, title fight after this and everything but ufc is going back to perth in june yes and, you know when you saw that was there a little you know hair stand up on the back of your neck like you need to fight there uh yeah like i would i always am going to take an opportunity to fight in australia if the ufc want to pay for my taxes that would be great because that shit hurts <laughs> And you mentioned the um, the Evicta, the Phoenix Rising events yep. coming up. Um, how do you feel about that that one night tournament format? Would you like to see that um, brought to other organizations? Yeah, I think it's really intriguing, and I think that they've done a really good job of uh, managing it based on like the rules on the commission. Like you can't fight more than five rounds a night, so they do one round to the tournament for each of the levels, and then three rounds in the final. So they do a really good job of managing that. It's exciting, and I've been to two of them now, and the format of the one round, man, like, you're getting, like, finishes in divisions that don't normally have a lot of finishes. Like, you have to go. Like, that five minutes is all you've got, and if you don't win, like, that's it. Like, you have to, like, it, it really forces the pace. It forces the action. Um, I remember the very first the very first Phoenix series that we, we had, the first fight was a fight uh, – with uh she's from iceland and uh, i forgot her name uh suna david's daughter uh fought kaylin curran that was the very first fight of the very first phoenix series and they had both dropped each other probably at two or three times in that five minute period and it was so like shannon and i had goosebumps like because it was just so exciting and i would love to see more of it but i think invicta has done a really good job of of really setting themselves apart with that type of like exciting format. You mentioned, you know, the fights that's coming in the UFC in a pretty short time span. Um, what do you think has been the biggest part of your game to evolve in that time frame? Um, really, it's just uh, having the confidence to be able to showcase what I'm capable of that I do every day in training. 
Um, I think uh, really just being comfortable with the nerves and, and I know I've been very open about mental health issues and that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it's just like a culmination of everything of just consistency, persistence, hard work and, and, and having the confidence to be able to go out and like and showcase everything that I know I'm, cap I know I'm capable of. What do you think would be your closest performance to you know, showing that? Uh, definitely my last one, yeah. I think I was able to showcase a lot of a little bit, like it didn't go for very long, but a little bit of, of what I'm capable of. And I'm really excited to, to do more and to kind of build off that for this next one. And you mentioned the uh, uh, so mental health issues and others, fighters who have anxiety going into fights and sometimes pull to fights. Do you have any advice for, for fighters out there for preparing for a fight and for, for fight week? Like what, what gets you there? Um, I think like you have to understand that like it's okay to have these feelings like I think a lot of people feel like that there is something wrong with them uh, if they have these feelings or they, or they can't deal with it or they don't know how to manage it. Like, and it's, it's not the case at all. Like it's perfectly okay to, you know, feel sad or anxious or have anxiety or depression or whatever it is. Like it's, it's okay to not be okay. And I think, you know, there is such a stigma around everyone having to have their shit together all the time. Let's be real, like none of us have our shit together, <laughs> but we all do a really good job of pretending that we do. And I think, you know, more people that, you know, I come out and, I, and I'm realistic about this and, and they understand, okay, like it's okay to feel this way. It's okay to not have, you know, my shit together. It's okay to, you know, feel nervous or feel anxious or, or all this kind of stuff. I think when you become at peace with that, that's when you can kind of really be freed by it. Um, I Marvel put out that call for interest for uh, She-Hulk. Yeah. So <laughs> you to throw your hat in on, on Twitter. I'm not sure if that was serious or not, but if yeah. so, like, how, how do you go about even doing that? I don't know, right. Tim. <laughs> no, uh, I, uh, I would love that opportunity. It's definitely something that I in would be interested in doing is uh, – getting into film and, and TV and stuff like that. And I feel like I would be a perfect She-Hulk. <laughs> I think I'm similarly built and, you know, I, it would be an amazing opportunity if I'm given the chance.